gear is more important than skill, right? Or is it the other way around? I can never remember. In any case, today we have a gearing guide for 9.1. And regardless of if you've been slacking or sweating for the past few weeks, this one is for you. You might have some questions, like how do I get best in slot gear? Do I need to PVE? What the hell is a mega dungeon? And will she ever text me back? Uh, oops, <laughs> that's not supposed to be in the script. Anyway, we will be going over some of the changes to gear in 9.1 and give you some secret options on how to gear up alts for the new season. So be sure to stick around because right now is the perfect time to get a character ready to dominate the competition. But before we get into it, we have a quick question for you. What do you think is more important, gear or skill? This is one of the oldest debates in WoW history, but where do you stand? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And while you're commenting below, let us tell you more about skill caps. We offer a 250 rating guarantee, and we think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium WoW guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week with over 500 guides curated into over 50 courses. No one can compare. We also send rank one players into LFG where they commentate on how to carry live. In addition to high MMR games where you can gain an insight into pro player decision making. You'll also gain premium access to our Discord server where our team of pros respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $4.99 a month if you're serious about improving. Starting off, let's go over some of the new systems being added in 9.1, starting off with everyone's favorite, Renown. There will now be 40 additional levels of Renown to grind, meaning the cap is now up to 80. Regardless of how geared your character is now, you will need to start grinding Renown as soon as possible, since you will need it for unlocking new Soulbind abilities and to upgrade Honor gear in Season 2. There's a new zone added in 9.1 called Corthia, which is where you will be doing many of your new story quests to upgrade Renown and grind reputation for gear sockets. Getting to this zone requires you to start a story quest in Oribos near Bolvar, where you will be sent on a few different missions, eventually landing you in Corthia. These story quests will help you level your renown, and once you're in this new zone, you can begin farming reputation with the Death's Advance in order to buy Alloy Warping Face Tour, which you will need to socket gear in Season 2. On top of that, once you complete enough chapters in your story, you will be able to unlock flying in Shadowlands. Because of this, we highly recommend getting to Corthia as soon as possible on all of your characters in order to get a jump start on renown, flying, and sockets. 9.1 also introduces a new gearing system called Shards of Domination. But first, we have a huge disclaimer. This new system is nerfed by 50% in PvP. Although the gear we will discuss will be essential in raiding, it is unclear just how good it will be in arena since PvP item levels are higher than most mythic raiding gear. You will still be competitive even without needing to grind Shards of Domination, which is the focus of this section. Okay, with that out of the way, there are new gems called Shards of Domination that can be socketed on specific gear types from the new raid. There are three types of shards, Blood, Frost, and Unholy, and then three subtypes of each for damage, healing, and defense. You can have a maximum of five shards spread across different pieces of your gear. Here's a list of all the different shard types and their effects. Note that shards can be upgraded, which is a whole other topic, but once again, there is a damage, healing, and defense version of every shard type. For PvP, you will likely want a mixture of damage and defense shards if you are a DPS, and healing and defense shards if you are a healer. Shard of Kier from the Frost type will give you a stacking absorb shield up to 6600 when fully upgraded and will likely be optimal in certain matchups like against RMP for denying damage in the opener. Shard of Joss also looks promising as a general PvP option, though once again it is unclear whether or not it is worth sacrificing increased item level and versatility in order to socket this gem. Here is a full list of all the shards that we think might be valuable in PvP, broken down by roles. As always, take into consideration that a 1 increase in average item level is a 1% increase in damage or healing. So with Duelist level gear being 259 item level, you are fairly safe itemizing everything you need from PvP alone since the increased eye level might be more consistent than the shard's bonus effects. 
Every helmet, shoulder, and chest piece in the Sanctum of Domination raid, regardless of difficulty, will have a Shard of Domination socket, while armor-specific off-pieces will also be socketed. For cloth, it will be your bracers and belt. For leather, it will be your gloves and boots. For mail, it will be belt and boots. And finally, for plate, it will be bracers and gloves. But you might be thinking right now, hey, my legendary is in one of those slots, what do I do? Well, here's the bad news. You will likely have to recraft your legendary if it is a helmet, shoulder, or chest piece, or if it is the same slot as socketed off piece. For instance, right now in my Resto Druid, I have the Verdant Infusion legendary on my gloves, but this is one of the inventory slots for leather wearers that will have a shard of domination socket. What this means is that I might have to recraft my legendary to a cloak so it doesn't compete with the domination socket. In any case, farming Torghast will still be worth it no matter what since you will need to be upgraded legendaries anyway, and you might need to craft some of the new Legos being added in the patch, especially if you're a Ret Paladin or a Warrior for Divine Resonance and Elysian Might. In addition to all of this, your legendaries can also now be leveled up to rank 6 using a new currency called Soul Cinders, which you will get from Torghast by completing levels 9 through 12 of each instance. So if you were hoping that 9.1 would be the end of your weekly Torghast grind, think again, because you will need to take weekly trips to the Maw to fully upgrade your legendaries. By now you might be wondering, this is a PvP gearing guide, where is the PvP gear? Well, that has changed a bit too due to item level scaling. This is something we briefly covered in our 9.1 review video, which you should definitely check out if you want to see the biggest class changes for Season 2. Also, by the way, you can subscribe for more Shadowlands content, we got some cool stuff on the way. 9.1 introduces PvP specific item level on both Honor and Conquest gear. Each item will essentially scale up 13 item levels whenever you are in instance PvP. And going by what WoW devs have said in previous interviews, this means that in PvP, your Honor and Conquest gear will be 13% stronger. This change was in response to PvE players arguing that the best-in-slot raid gear should come from raids, not from getting 2400 elite weapons in PvP. Many of the top progression guilds were farming arenas and RBGs last season just so they could have best-in-slot weapons from 2400 raiding. In any case, here is a list of conquest gear item levels in Season 1 both outside and inside PvP. Note that gear upgrades will still require specific ratings, with duelist level upgrades still requiring a rating of 2100. In Season 2, there will not be any elite weapons requiring 2400, so in order to get fully geared and fully upgraded, you simply need to hit duelist and upgrade all of your conquest pieces to be mostly best in slot. Upgrades still require honor, and the amount of honor required depends on the slot. Weapons still cost the most to upgrade, while off pieces cost significantly less. Honor gear will also have 13 increased item level in PvP, but the gear itself is fairly underwhelming when you consider the time and effort it takes to purchase and fully upgrade. The highest PvP scaled item level from honor gear will be 229, which is lower than the 233 unranked conquest gear. On top of that, honor upgrades for the 4th and 5th tier will require Renown 43, while the 6th and final tier will require Renown 59, which won't even be accessible for almost 2 months. This also means that your current Conquest gear might actually be better than 9.1 honor gear, despite the fact that Season 1 Conquest gear doesn't scale in PvP. If you already have a full set of Season 1 Conquest gear, your main concern should be farming Conquest as usual, seeing what you get in the Great Vault every week, and then selecting your upgrades accordingly. It will be important to stay ahead on Conquest every week, since most of the fully upgraded 259 gear will be best in slot, especially if you don't plan on raiding for the new Shards of Domination or potentially broken Mythic raiding weapons. 9.1 will change Vault rewards slightly and will now have a lower chance to reward cloaks, necklaces, and CC related trinkets. Now that we have that out of the way, you might be asking, what pieces of gear should I buy with Conquest? The answer to that question depends on a few things. Here are some general rules. One, don't spend any conquest before looting your great vault for the week just in case you accidentally buy a piece you wind up getting from your RNG loot. Two, try and save up enough conquest to buy your weapon if you don't loot it from the vault in the first few weeks. Three, avoid buying helm, shoulder, and chest pieces if you plan on doing PvE content. Four, avoid buying off pieces that share slots with shards of domination sockets. Once again, this depends on your armor type. And finally, five, Avoid buying a piece that shares a slot with your main legendary. One thing that might be worth buying earlier into the season is the new Unchained Gladiator's Shackles Trinket. Having it early on might give you a unique advantage against players who aren't even aware it exists. 
Rogues and Hunters might want to hold off on buying their weapons, however, since the last two bosses of Sanctum of Domination dropped some potentially broken items. Edge of Night is a dagger from Sylvanas that causes finishing moves to deal shadow damage, and there is even a new legendary bow from the encounter that gives you an entire new ability. There is a two-handed sword from Kel'Thuzad worth considering that can be upgraded by destroying other weapons. Once fully upgraded, it will have a random proc that deals damage and grants a massive amount of strength. Once again, it is unclear whether or not these effects will even work in PvP, so keep that in mind while making any gearing decisions. Before we finish, let's recap what you should be doing day one of the patch. The first thing you should do, regardless of your current gear, is start the next section of your story campaign in Ouroboros to get to Corthia. Not only will this give you renown, but it will also allow you to unlock flying in Shadowlands. Staying ahead on Renown is important because it will unlock new rows in the Soulbind system. Once you are in Corthia, you should start farming reputation in the Death's Advance, which you will need in order to socket gear in Season 2. For a complete guide on this new rep, be sure to check out Wowhead. You might also want to reconsider recrafting your legendary, which is obviously quite irritating, but Soul Ash rewards are dramatically increased in 9.1, making the grind way less time consuming. In any case, you should continue to grind Torghast since you will need the new Soul Cinders to upgrade pieces to level 5 and 6. No matter what though, you should stay ahead on your conquest grind every week, as the fully upgraded gear will have an item level of 259 in PvP, making it 100% best in slot for most of your pieces. Then, if you really want to min-max your character, we recommend trying to get into a raid in order to get at least on Shard of Domination socketed gear. Once again, they might not be essential in PvP, but will definitely give you an edge in really specific matchups. By now you might be wondering what to do if you are really undergeared, or how to progress alts later into the season. You can still farm Conquest in the first week of the patch, even though Season 2 doesn't officially start until July 6th. This might be a good option because it will allow you to get some gear while practicing some of your new PvP talents. Note that any Conquest you gain during this week will be reset once the season starts on July 6th. Unlike Conquests, Honor will not be reset once Season 2 starts, meaning you might want to grind Honor in the off week as well, since you can use it to purchase Honor gear early on, or save up to upgrade Conquest gear later. Entry level gear can also be obtained from Corthia, which is convenient because you will need to be here in order to grind renown in sockets anyway. There is some gear you can acquire using currency in this zone, but it only has a base eye level of 200 and will require a ton of farming in order to upgrade to 233. We don't really recommend this as a primary gearing option for alts since you are probably better off farming conquest at the start of the season anyway, but might be a good opportunity to fill out some of your item slots. There will be a new world boss in this zone that drops 233 item level gear, so you might want to throw it into your normal weekly rotation if you want a chance at loot every week. It should be noted that this world boss will also drop some new conduits, which will definitely be worth collecting since the Soulbind system is being expanded to include more rows once you reach specific renown levels. Finally, 9.1 will be introducing a mega dungeon that you can use as another source of gear for your alt, or even your main. This dungeon will be called Tazavesh the Veiled Market, and will have a difficulty similar to Mythic Dungeons, but being scaled up to include 8 different bosses. One final alternative to get your alts some quick gear will be to queue Time Walking Raids once they cycle around again in a few weeks. On the PTR, all Time Walking Raid gear from Firelands has an item level of 266, making it almost as good as fully upgraded Honor gear. Unfortunately, you will have to wait until July 13th for the next time walking event to start, where you will be able to queue Warlords of Dungeon Raids in order to get some entry level gear. And there you have it, 9.1 introduces a bunch of new ways to gear your character, so hopefully the issue of gearing alts won't be that big of a problem. Although the new Shards of Domination might seem intimidating at first, they aren't really that important in PvP unless you want to min-max. If you like this video, be sure to drop a like and comment your thoughts in the 9.1 patch down below. If you want to stay up to date on future uploads, be sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications. We will be giving you more Season 2 content, including updated tier lists. And as always, thanks for watching.